What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerdcast for the next episode of Shadowrun Hong Kong where I desperately hope we get to shoot something soon. There's been too much talky talky and not enough shoddy shoddy. Let's go over to the mementos and see what we got. Go. I already ate his dinner so I figure we might as well continue rifling through his stuff. This box is packed full of odds and ends. It nearly overflows with a collection of knickknacks, souvenirs, and assorted personal effects. There's no rhyme or reason to the collection of items. They appear to have been thrown in haphazardly. Who organizes their items by rhyme scheme though? That would be the most chaotic thing ever, because then the mess on my desk would, like, it's just, you can't, how would you do that? Arranging your house by a rhyme scheme. So posters would have to go with the coasters and the toasters. It would just be, it would be a mess. You can't do it. Can't do it. High standards on this one. The wooden mask is extremely light. It's been painted a pale white, and the surface is almost as smooth as porcelain. Delicate features and lifted eyebrows are matched with bright red lips and delicately carved teeth. The teeth have been stained a deep black. The small charms are square cloth pocket or cloth packets, each approximately one inch wide and three inches tall. They come in a variety of bright colors and are embroidered with characters for prosperity, peace, wealth, and protection. Inside each appears to be a folded paper prayer or fortune written in Japanese. Unfolding the fan, you tilt it up towards the light to examine it. The image depicts an East Asian city from the 19th century or earlier, curved roofs at the sunset beside a deep blue river. Two ships sail down the river, which is in turn spanned by a long wooden bridge. In the foreground, laborers carry buckets along the shore as a man on horseback rides in the opposite direction. In the distance, a pair of large red buildings dominate the skyline, one large temple hall, and a five-tiered pagoda. As you step away from the box, you hear a slight click in the distance, the sound of the door's latch shutting. You are no longer alone in the stockroom. Standing before you is a man clad in heavy armor bearing a katana on his hip. His skin is an ashen gray, his eyes dead white, his teeth are jagged and appear sharp. This is no man. This is a ghoul. The ghoul's blind eyes search back and forth as it regards you. It cannot see you, but you have a sense that it knows exactly where you are at all times. Ah! A hired gun, no doubt brought to bear against me by the Wampoan elders, a means by which they can lift the curse plaguing them. I salute your tenacity, but I wonder, will you hear me out before raising your weapon to kill me? Oh, I was so excited about shooting something too, and now he's sentient. Damn it. You're a ghoul and you're talking? Yes, I am not only talking, I am reasoning as well, and since you have not attempted to kill me, your own higher faculties are engaged. I am a curiosity to you. The ghoul bares his teeth, breath rasping over them as he inhales. You wish to know how, not only what I am, but what I have done. As for who, you may call me Gai Chu. That's not... <laughs> Kazoo type. Anyway, it sounds like what a right. It sounds like a uh, sounds like a Pikachu evolution. We're like, I am now Gaichu. Use too many thunderstones on him. It's just a cracked out Raichu. Just sits there twitching the whole time. He's like, Arr! more thunderstone. Powder it. Powder it. Ah! I know who you are. You're the one killing the Wampo. Wait, you're the one killing the Wampo and elders. You are correct. I have killed all of the Wampo and elders to date, though only Elder Magpie was according to my initial plan. I regret the deaths of the other elders, but it was necessary. Explain yourself. The affair began, simply enough. As you may surmise, I am not someone who can be seen in public without great risk. Wampoa Garden is an excellent place to hide. No police or triad presence and minimal interest in things that lurk in the shadows. Unfortunately for me, Elder Ink discovered me through communion with her spirits. Rather than kill or chase me away, she came to me with a proposition. Ink and the other elders were having problems with one of their number. An elder named Magpie who had been holding many of their plants hostage and would not budge. They could not remove Magpie, however, because their services were too useful to the Wampoans at large. Ang offered me payment to dispose of Magpie and I accepted. Wu shoots at you a sidelong glance, Tusk bared as he grits his jaw. Why the hell are we talking to this thing, Splattercat? It's a goddamn ghoul and you know what they're like. Really? What, pray tell, am I like? All teeth and claws and bad manners, I expect. Gaichu's tone is amused despite the harshness of his rasping voice. Really? You want to crack jokes, cannibal? Wu takes an involuntary step forward, raising his rifle. You're the kind of monster that'd devour a family just because it's convenient. I remember the 162s, or remember the 162s, Splattercat? He's just like them. The 162s were a gang in the Barons, Wu. Like that makes a bit of difference. Go on then, talk to the monster, but I'm keeping my finger on the goddamn trigger. I believe that we were speaking of the Elder's plans to have me kill Magpie. Surely you must be a little curious about that. You didn't clean up all of her blood. I found some in the drain. Ah, unfortunate. I thought I was careful enough. Having it on my hands must have obscured my sense of smell enough that I missed the last remnants in the drain. I disposed of Magpie's body by emptying the blood in her bathroom. Then I cut her up into more portable pieces. 
Those were placed in a plastic tarp, which I took to the storm drains and hid. Guy Chu nonchalantly waves a hand, his flat tone and unconcern. It's unfortunate, but my survival depends upon consumption of raw meta-human flesh. Letting such nourishment go to waste would be a foolish error. But why kill the other elders? I contacted them, not in person, of course, and they arranged to exchange payment. I assumed that since the job was done, Ng would be a woman of her word. Baring his teeth, Gai Chu hisses the next words across clenched teeth. I was mistaken. I arrived at the nearby parking garage the elders had told me about. They cleared out the other Wampoans under some pretense, although I'm not sure what ruse they had used. The elders never showed up. Instead, several members of the Hong Kong police force arrived. They were more heavily armed than usual, so I suspect they know something of my nature. I heard about the fight. You expect me to believe you took on a police squad and won? Of course. I've survived as a ghoul for some years now on the streets of Hong Kong. If that evidence isn't evidence enough of my tenacity, I doubt my words I would say to you will change your mind. A betrayal of that sort cannot stand. Not only was I not paid for my time and effort, the Wampoan elders treated me like a common animal. And I'm so much more than that. Reputation is everything, and I had none. I had hoped to build a network of contacts so that I would be able to continue finding work. But with that treachery, my hopes were dashed. I decided to become the monster that they feared. One by one, I've eliminated them. They know how to contact me and could have ended their nightmare at any time by making amends. I would have asked for more money, but I would have ceased my hunt, and yet, they did not. Instead, they contacted you, no doubt asking you to eliminate me where the police had failed. So I ask you, what now? What will you do? Will you attempt to finish what the Wampoans started, or will you treat me with the same humanity I have shown you? Hmm. I mean, I grease people all the time for money. So I can't really be mad that a ghoul grease somebody for money. That's like 80% of my job is killing people so I can get paid. I've made my decision. Oh, well then, what will you do? How will the story end? Come and work with me, I can be your face. A curious offer, and what of the elders? Will you allow me the satisfaction of killing them? I want to see what they have to say first. Hmm, I would counsel you not to believe their words, but you have the sound of one who is wary as a matter of course. Very well. Let us wait until a bit later in the night. Most pedestrians will be off the street, and it will be easier for, easier for us to approach the Wampo without being noticed. Sounds like a plan. Dude, we can have a ghoul in our party right now. How sick would that be? I have to have a ghoul in my party. He also runs like an orc from World of Warcraft, and that makes me happy. He runs very similarly. It makes me stoked, and so I'm going to have him in my party now, because everybody knows orcs are the best because they have giant shoulder pads. I don't know how this is going to go, but we'll figure it out. As you approach, Elder Ng's eyes widen. Her mouth falls open and the veins on her neck bulge. What are you doing? You brought this thing into our home? Quickly, kill it before it kills us. Porter hefts his pistol warily, but does not aim at anyone. Yeah, I have to say, this isn't a good idea. Why the hell is there a ghoul in here and why is it wearing armor? Calm yourselves. I am not an it and your elders know this intimately. Gai Chu bares his teeth in a rictus grin as he turns to face Ng. Good evening, Elder Ng. I can smell your fear and I am glad of this. It means you are learning the price of betrayal. Whoa, what the hell is going on here? Can somebody explain to me why the ghoul is talking? Gai Chu had a contract with the elders and they betrayed him. You dare to accuse us of conspiring with a monster and covering it up? You're insane. The very idea is preposterous. Porter nods at the elders, looking back to you with a wary expression. I'm interested to hear what kind of evidence you have to support this theory, Splattercat. As far as I can tell, this monster killed Tong and the others. That makes him a threat that should be eliminated. The elders hired Gai Chu to kill Elder Magpie and make it look like she disappeared. You believe this vermin? This creature that feasts on metahuman flesh, that kills and dismembers our tribesmen? You're a naive and foolish man if that's the case. Ng spits on the ground in front of Gai Chu. What proof do you have that Magpie is dead? Ng, please. <laughs> it matters where Elder is accused of breaking our law. The other Elders generally judge them. In matters where all of them have been accused, I am authorized to act as a judge. Make your case, Shadowrunner. There was a large amount of blood in her shower drain. So what? Perhaps she cut herself and washed the cut off. Or perhaps you're mistaken about it being blood. You're simply guessing as to what happened. It's true, it's a guess, and even if it is her blood, that doesn't prove that the elders hired the ghoul to kill her. We got the mag- Oh man, I should have gotten more stuff. I found Magpie's necklace in the storm drains. Takes a moment to examine the necklace, then nods at you. This is definitely Elder Magpie's. If you found it in the storm drains, that's suspicious, but hardly proof on its own. Of course it's not proof. The number of things lost down storm drains in Hong Kong must number in the tens of thousands per year. I'm certain the necklace isn't unique either. 
I would like some warning that was like, you should go back and get more evidence. I thought we were just going to walk in and they were going to be like, oh, the ghoul's talking. That's so abnormal. We're going to take his word for it because he's an abnormality. Whew. I would have stayed and gathered more evidence had I known this was going to happen. I didn't know we were going to go to trial after this. We said she disappeared. It's hardly impossible. We haven't established that the elders were involved. All you've done is make suppositions about it. What proof do you have that we hired and betrayed the creature? It won't sit by and listen to idle accusations without any kind of concrete evidence to back it up. What about the fight with the Hong Kong police force? What do you mean? What does that have to do with the elders and the ghoul? You want Pomas don't allow police inside the area. Why make the exception this time? The police were polite and asked our permission to enter. They were hunting a non Wampoan. That was reason enough. Porter considers this for a moment, then shakes his head. That doesn't add up, Ing. Why would the police- No! I finally failed! Why would the police ask us for entry now? They've never been polite before. They've always tried to force their way in here. It just doesn't ring true to me. Why- Did you ask them to come in order to hunt down the ghoul? Preposterous! Porter, you know what our community is like. We wouldn't lie over something like this. This ghoul has been lying the entire time trying to cover his tracks. He still brutally murders several elders. That's true. The murders were vicious and cruel. He fixes you with a hard stare. I don't see any way to explain that away. This ghoul is a monster for how he killed Tong and the others. Well, Tong wasn't tortured. There was no astral residue of pain or fear. He didn't even feel the blow. That's correct. I struck a single blow while his back was to me. His death was instant. Regrettable that he had to die for your folly, Eng. But necessary to protect my reputation. Eng stares at Gaichu in stony silence before addressing Porter. You cannot believe what these people say. They are not to be trusted. And even if this was true, he still killed Tong. Porter looks back at Eng. His expression flattened without emotion. Maybe so, Eng. But a monster wouldn't take Tong's suffering into account. He may be a killer, but he's not heartless. The scene of Tong's murder, like the others, was a deliberate sham. It was made to look like, or was made to look more horrific than it was. I believe you. The blood smeared on the walls, the removal of his skin. That's a scene designed to evoke horror, not the scene of an actual fight. Elders, what do you have to say in response? This is a farce. We have dedicated ourselves to protecting the Wampoa tribe and everyone who lives in Wampoa Garden. Do you really believe outsiders and monsters over our word? We who have only tried to end the killings? You've been duped, Porter. You and the Shadow Runner. I concur. Porter, you know me. You know the kind of person that I am. I wouldn't be party to the killing of another elder. I can't believe we're even entertaining the notion that we have to defend ourselves. We should be disposing of this ghoul instead. Tang narrows his eyes at you, hissing. If you think I'll forget this, you're sorely mistaken. I will not tolerate this kind of insult. Well... The elders were all too happy to have the Red Spears move into the garage, almost like they wanted to keep anybody curious out about the fight away. That's right. If you even told me not to go and find out what happened with the fight. You said the Red Spear gangers were moving in and to leave them alone. Why would you tell me not to look into it? I was only trying to protect you from the Red Spears. They're dangerous, which is why I wanted to deal with them directly. Magpie's gear was also missing. Obviously so. Why didn't Ip tell me that? He would have had noticed. And Magpie's shop is locked up. Why didn't he want me investigating? Pure supposition. You think it proves something that I didn't notice the equipment was missing? Magpie's shop is always a horrible mess. Tang, you did a full inventory of Magpie's matrix servers. You assured us everything was running fine and you would be able to continue her work. I find it hard to believe you missed something as obvious as missing equipment, especially while searching her stock. Apparently that's all that I've got. Alright, I think I have some idea what's going on here. And what do you believe the real story is? The waters are muddy on this matter. The ghoul seems to be telling some of the truth, and I respect that. But the fact remains, he's a dangerous member, or he's a dangerous creature who killed many of our number. Our law is clear on this. He must die. You seem to be blameless in this splatter cat. What do you say to this decision? I'm not gonna let you kill him. I'm a gun for hire, dude. I kill people the exact same way that he did. Then you too must die. Ip. They ready their weapons. Oh shit. Well, at least we got the first turn. That's pretty cool. Why is my gun not equipped? All my stuff's missing. Let's put that into control mode. Yes. And then I'm going to dive into whatever cover I can find here so that bad things don't happen to me. We can leave the drone. It's not that big of a deal. But Splattercat needs to get into cover like right now. Otherwise he's going to get chewed up on the next turn. So next we got Joni the Droney. I'm going to leave Joni the Droney out to be kind of a... I don't know. Who's the scariest here? Who's got magic? That's all that I care about. It's probably Ing. Yeah! 12 damage. What abilities do I have? Lock shot. I got target head. Let's do target head. That sounds dope. No! You missed! Joni the Droney, all I wanted from you was to do your job, and you messed it up. 
This is why I don't trust a robot to do man work. I'm gonna focus on moving everybody into cover. I can't throw a grenade till next turn, so we're gonna have to wait on that one. These guys appear to be pretty tough. I'm gonna focus on the wizard, I think. Or at least the one that is slightly scarier. What do we have here? Rat totem? That may help out. However, for right now... I need people in cut. Wait, does that count? That shield is weird. Why would that be covered to the right? Shouldn't that be covered to that way? Huh. Odd. I'm gonna duck them into cover real quick. Ah, I only got him for four damage. This could get painful on the next turn. We now have our Adept. I'm gonna move the Adept forward. What does the Adept do? Counter strike when the Adept ends a turn. We'll counter attack when attacked. Okay, so they can get a bunch of... We got martial defense. Light cover bonus, so let's go ahead and take that since she's out in the open. She's got stun bolt. She's got killing hands. She's got stride. The adept's movement is increased by two. How many AP does she have? Let's go killing hands and we'll get tuned up for the next part of the fight. So damage plus seven right there. We don't have a ton of options, but we do have some things. We've got a hand forge katana versus his claws, which do eight and nine respectively. I'm gonna try and soak this. With a 30% chance water too. What does that do? Oh shit, we got flanked hard. Apparently he can shoot through the racks. That make I guess you can shoot through racks. You should get some kind of damage reduction for it, though. So we got a slow on that side. Not sure what he's going for right there. Lowered our AP slightly, but I'm not that scared of it. I need Ink to go first, so if we can get rid of Ink quickest, that'd be what I would prefer here. Go Burst Fire on Ink, I guess. So we did 21 damage right there. Man, Ink's got a chin on him. Ink has a chin on him. Or her. So there's a little bit of damage right there. X-Flow is on one side. We got a drone up here too. Not sure what my favorite decision is here. Can I heal anybody? Let's go ahead and heal X-Flow real fast. Get that damage off since that's pretty much all we took for the turn. X-Flow. Everybody's going to have to pick a friend here. Pick a special friend. Put X-Flow over here, I guess. And we'll get started with the punchy punchy. So there's 19 damage right there. Big ol' hit on that side. Our drone is pretty much ready to fire at people, so we could have the drone. Wow, that drone's got really good accuracy. I suppose I could start... What does that do? Target leg does AP damage. Okay, so we could do... A lock shot, which unfortunately missed. Man, we have a bad luck with those high... We've missed a 99% shot. We've missed all kinds of shots. It gets to the point where, like, the high percentage shots we keep missing. I know it's not the case, but it makes you not trust the numbers. It makes you think that something's up. Shotgun blast to the forehead, which surprisingly did not do as much damage as I thought it would. I will probably shoot bullets in this general direction. Focus on one thing at a time. On this side, Duncan is, like, horrifically flanked, so it's odd that that character didn't go after him because it should have. He's only got a pistol anyways, so how much damage could he actually feasibly do? Take an aim shot for a little bit more right there. I should be able to go Mercy Kill right here. Alright, Mercy Kill's done, all taken care of. On this side, I'm going to throw some poison gas into that cover. Unfortunately, it missed, so we're not going to be able to do much with that. That's such a cheese mode move. See, that's one of the reasons why your full move allotment should only cost 1 AP. I should be allowed to move as many times inside this area as I want, and it should still count as 1. Because then, cheese mode characters like that can step backwards by 1 space and shoot you, and it drains 1 of your AP having to move 1 space and then punch him. It's like, come on. I mean, I guess you could argue that, like, it deprives him of an extra shot, but it's still just, like, a cheesy way to play the game. 
A little bit more damage right there. If I was playing tabletop and somebody did that, I'd eyebrow raise. I would definitely eyebrow raise. I'd be like, mm -hmm. Take a shot over there with the 99%. Let's give him minus one AP since he doesn't really appear to have that many AP anyways. We'll bring our Gai Chu over here. Stance three. If I'm lucky, Gai Chu will turn out to be an adept. He did it again, you little shitbag. Oh, that's hilarious. He did it again. I suppose I'm just going to take my shot. On this side, I think Duncan can probably handle him. 20 damage done right there. I'll probably have the, the drone finish him off real fast with an aim. Oh, he has 99 anyways. Go for headshot then. Boom. Kill shot. And then we'll probably supplement this over here with a couple of rounds. A little bit more damage right there. Cover's going to eat up a lot of that though, so you got to watch out for it. That's going to clean out Guy Chu's target. 14 damage right there, which is just like, whoo, that's a big hit. On this side, I need him to cycle in, so I'll move her out on the next turn so that she doesn't go down. And then that'll be it. Got him in a corner. So we've run out of line of sight on this side, unfortunately. I'm going to have to bring people out. He's got himself backed in pretty well. Go ahead and see if we can get anybody a shot off here. There it is. And so I'm going to give him... We don't have Mercy Kill, but I'll give him the Flame Round. Flanked for 18 damage right there. Nice. Went through two armor. On this side, I'll probably cycle into a cover spot too. We'll reload her on the next turn. On this side. Let's move you out since you're a little bit wounded. That'll allow a space for Gai Chu, who should be able to deliver the killing blow. And so there it is. As the elders fall to the floor, you stop and survey the carnage around you. It is accomplished. No more betrayers alive. No more worry that others may think they can take advantage of me. Lead the way. I look forward to our new business partnership. I don't think we're getting paid for this job. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that payment is probably not coming through. We did get a badass samurai ghoul, though, as a party member, so that's payment enough for me. I'm a little bit worried about what Kindly Chang's going to say. I'm slightly concerned, but, you know... What are you going to do about it, I guess? Let's go to the MTR. I'm interested to see what the fallout's going to be for this, because obviously I didn't do enough research before I went. I got bored, though. I wanted to shoot somebody. <laughs> All right, back to Hioi we go. It's a little bit weird that Lamb joined their side, though. The MTR rockets noiselessly towards Hioi along the edge of Kowloon Bay. The black water glitters in the night with the light of a thousand reflected storefronts. Guy Chu stares sightlessly out the window, one hand pressed to the glass. The Wampoan elders are dead. They forced your hand and paid the price for it. Their story was a cleverly crafted lie meant to put the ghoul to death for their greed, but was the trade you made worth it? The uncertainty of the choice is as clouded as the sky above you. Yeah, there's going to be fallout for this one. I think we might have to go see, uh, we may have to go see Auntie Chang, and this may not turn out well. Sometimes I'm running around behind the screen right now and it's not going away, weirdly enough. So we got 8 karma for the quest. I don't think we got paid though. Hey, people leveled up. That's pretty cool. I like level ups. So where is his grenade catcher arm? Because I totally want that. So nail grenade. He gets lethal force with the nail grenade or he gets the flashbang. It's so rare that I actually get to throw a grenade, so that'll do 12 damage, ongoing 4 for 2 rounds, so it'll do 20 total AoE, strips and armor, versus that, which probably does minus 2 AP. I'll go with crowd control, we haven't gone with a lot of crowd control yet, and I feel pretty good about this one, so we'll get after it. Oh, Gai Chu gets abilities too, good for you man, I'm excited about this, he's gonna be a samurai, it's gonna be amazing. Gaichu gets a defensive ability that adds two armor and one dodge. It costs one AP on a cooldown of five. Active defense. It gives him armor and dodge. Or ghoul. Gaichu gains a claw ability. Rip does two damage and two bleeding for two, one AP. Uh, since he's going to be in the front of it all, I'll probably take the defensive upgrade. For Isabel, we're probably never going to bring her anywhere ever again, so it doesn't matter. However, 
I'll probably upgrade her grenade launcher just in case because it is pretty sick. I don't even care what the other one is because she's never going to deck again anyways. And on this side, territoriality, we can take poison fog, which does AP damage on top of the HP damage. That's pretty good. Or shrine spirit summoned by goblet are now present for an additional turn before dispelling themselves. Both of those are good. Both of those are really good. One of them is situational, but like the the spirits in this game are absolutely just home wreckers. So an extra turn of him attacking with four AP, doing upwards of 50 damage a turn. That's pretty hardcore, but we can only use it when there's a summoning spot nearby versus Territoriality, which is always available, but slightly less useful because it's subject to cover modifier. I'm going to go with Spiritualist, I think. I'm going to go with Spiritualist because that gives us an extra target for the enemy to shoot at, too. All right, that's it. Oh, man. I really, really, really... Let's go check the email on this one. I know we screwed the pooch. Wait, did it not finalize those? Confirm all. Oh, he gets extra ones. Okay. Cool. So that's nice that they made him catch up quickly. So we can get Spit, which is a ghoul ability. Gains a ranged ability. Spitting infected saliva into the target's face, which ignores all armor. Does 8 damage and does 4 per 2 rounds. That's pretty good. Or we can go with Shoot. I'm, I'm going to have to go with Ninja Stars. You know I have to take the Shuriken. Like, I have to. It's it's mandatory. Gains a ranged ability, a quick shuriken toss. Two range cooldown, does one AP, 12 damage. Yeah, let's do the AP damage. I like AP damage. It makes me happy. Red Samurai, coup de gras. And so, gains a katana ability, plus 100 damage, but can only attack stunned targets. That would be incredibly useful to match up with his stun grenade ability. I can stun grenade a group. He can run in. And since they'll be stunned, it's snicker snacked. All that fun stuff. Gaichu takes a bite out of the foe, restoring 8 HP over 2 rounds and gaining 1 strength through the conception of flesh. Deals damage and it does AP damage. Hmm. Tough call. Real tough call. Both of those are really solid. This ability has legitimate synergy with the way that we've built Duncan. And this one is just all around good. That's a really good ability. It doesn't do a lot of damage, but it heals him and it also knocks off their AP. I'll probably go with Coup de Gras, just because I can stack it with his grenade. And then from there, do I have anything else that stuns people? So he's got Flashbang. See. I should have gone with Underslung. I didn't know he was going to be an option, though, later on. So it's kind of like one of those metagame things that were I to do it differently. Were I to do it differently. I'll probably take his crowd control in the next one, too. And I will more than likely, I don't know, I'll take the, the stun arm over there. Shit. Well, hell, Red Samurai sounds dope, so I'm going to go with that. Ghoul is good, but Red Samurai, 100 damage is enough to basically one-shot somebody so long as... Oh, I get to claim money? Huh. I sort of doubt that resolution. You enter the trawler to find your crew gathered together waiting for you. Isabel has her head buried in her PDA. The rest of them stand watching her, trying to be patient. Isabel, you look like you have something to tell the class. The dwarf paces up and back trying to decide how to begin. I've been doing my homework on Josephine Sang and Sang Mechanical Services. So you found something? You're pacing. Yeah, I found something alright. Isabel lifts her PDA to her face and consults her notes. In 2011, Sang Mechanical Services was a D-level corporation floundering in the shadow end of the Hong Kong corporate pool. That's when Josephine Shui married into the family. Josephine thought big. She conceived of a massive project that would catapult TMS into the big time. Something she called the Prosperity Project. Prosperity. That's what Raymond was mumbling about. Alright, what is it? Once upon a time in the 1900s, the walled city was a densely populated slum. Something like 30,000 crammed into six and a half acres. Wait, I've heard this story before. It's a shithole, hell on earth, yada yada yada. That's today's walled city, the second walled city. The first one started life well over a hundred years ago and lasted through both world wars and almost through the awakening. It was torn down in 1994 when the government had finally had enough. It had become such a haven for criminals that the cops would only enter it in large, well-armed groups. Sounds familiar. In 2021, Josephine Sang proposed a vision for a new type of low-income housing project, the Prosperity Project, a self-contained, low-cost, walking neighborhood for the poor, but on a grand scale. The Prosperity Project would give Hong Kong's poor the flood of refugees pouring into the country a place they could call their own, something that felt more permanent than the sprawling tent city that spontaneously sprang up after the first walled city was demolished. The Prosperity Project would replace the tent city and would be symbolically built on the side of the old wall city. 
The slogan was a place of dignity where prosperity begins. The apartments weren't much bigger than the space you get your average coffin motel, but they were built around plazas and marketplaces that contained goods and services catering to the poor. The government forgot the lessons of the last walled city. They loved the idea of containing the refugees and poor to only a few densely populated blocks. It kept them out of the public eye. Securing the contract catapulted the same mechanical services fortunes ahead. It eventually put Josephine Sang onto the executive council. How'd she get so rich building a slum? It's a very big slum. Apparently that was also the beginning of a series of lucrative building contracts that propelled TMS into the big time. So where's Raymond come into all this? Raymond Black doesn't come into it at all, but Edward Sang does. Husband or son? Son. Raymond Black was actually Edward Sang, the only son of Josephine Sang and her late husband, Breakwater Sang. Edward was in charge of laying the groundwork for the walled city, excavation and utilities, running power lines, sewage, and that kind of thing. Was wondered where his money came from. Wait, this doesn't make any sense. Remember that massive gray water leak that flooded the basement back in 48? We got back from that camping trip in the Salish? Yeah, Ray screamed bloody murder about that. He was well, smiling. I'd never seen him so angry. He sobers, but did no Raymond know how to fix it? No. Ray didn't know the first thing about sewer lines. He hired a small army of plumbers, probably paid him double what the job was to fix the thing, and it still took two months to get the leak under control. And Josephine put him in charge of the utilities. No wonder the Wall City smells like that. I don't think Raymond had anything to do with the utilities in the Wall City. Huh. Alright, it's time to go. I'll see y'all later. Shadowrun Hong Kong, check it out down below. As always, I will see you in the next episode. Hi, do everybody.